Hey, welcome back to another episode of the Educational AD Podcast. We'll be right back with today's guest, but first let's hear from our podcast sponsors. We want to thank Violet Defense for their support of the Educational AD Podcast. Violet Defense is dedicated to protecting our world from germs by bringing the power of UV disinfection to everyday spaces. Their patented technology enables them to harness the power of the sun to incorporate ultraviolet light into their products and environments like never before. Whether you're ready to implement existing products, or if you'd like to explore researching and developing a custom deployment of their technology for your school's athletic department, Violet Defense has the solutions and the experience you need. Go to violetdefense.com for more information about their great products. We also want to thank Hometown Ticketing for their support. Hometown Ticketing is the leading digital ticketing provider to schools and colleges. You can learn more about what Hometown Ticketing can do for you and your program by going to hometownticketing.com. Hometown Ticketing, simple and easy online ticketing. We also want to thank Sideline Interactive for their support. You know, it's becoming harder and harder to fund an athletic department but Sideline Interactive's indoor scoring tables and video boards can generate $10,000 or more every year while also creating excitement in the gym and the ultimate game day experience for your student athletes. Go to sidelineinteractive.com or call 832-786-0302 to schedule a live web demo and see their tables and boards in action. You can also email them at sales at sidelineinteractive.com and find out exactly what these fantastic products can do for you. That's sales at sidelineinteractive.com. We also want to thank Wall of Fame by Vital Signs. You know, they are on a mission to bring your school's legacy to life. They have a variety of interactive touchscreen video consoles along with an extensive library of templates to make it easier than ever to recognize the athletic achievements of your students, both past and present. For ideas on how to showcase your school's diverse history, along with your proudest moments, go to vitalsignswalloffame.com. Or to learn more and get started with your own digital Wall of Fame tribute, call them at 614-981-3589. Or you can email them at sales at vitalsignswalloffame.com. That's sales at vitalsignswalloffame.com. We also want to thank Huddle for their support. Remember at Huddle, we power sports. More than 180,000 teams, including some of the best in the world, are using Huddle to help their teams and athletes play better using video and analytics. Huddle's the complete performance platform. They have online tools, mobile and desktop apps, smart cameras like the Huddle Focus. Of course, there's analytics and a whole lot more. Huddle is also built for every level of play, from club and youth programs all the way through high school and college teams. And even the pros are using Huddle to help their athletes play better. You're in pretty good company with over 6 million users, including your student athletes, a lot of their parents, and the coaches of the college and university teams you're trying to get to recruit your kids. If you want to find out more about what Huddle can do for you and how your school can become a Huddle school, go to Huddle.com and talk to their professionals. Remember, at Huddle, we power sports. And we also want to thank Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack for sponsoring the Athletic Director's Toolbox segment of our podcast. Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack are a quick, easy, and affordable way for you to collect some comprehensive data that allows you to evaluate and improve your entire athletic program. Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack also connects you with uh, 95% of the parents and the student athletes who really love your program. And it gives them a voice to help demonstrate the importance that a positive athletic experience has for them. Go to athleticsurveys.com and check out their testimonials. And then give them a call at 1-800-738-6466. Or you can email them at info 
at athleticsurveys.com to get started. If you've never used a survey to take the pulse of your parents or your student athletes, you're really missing out. Talk to the folks at Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack and let them help you take your athletic program from good to great. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Educational AD. We're going into the weight room today, and we're going to be visiting with Victoria Drool. She's the head of performance at Ransom Everglade School uh, down in Coral Gables, Florida. She's got a tremendous background in strength and conditioning and performance, and I think it's going to be a great episode for our athletic director listeners to find out you know, exactly how you can work with your performance coach. So uh, Victoria, welcome to the podcast. Good morning, Jay. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Oh, no, we're very excited. Uh, you and I connected on LinkedIn. Uh, I think I actually, um, uh, maybe two or three years ago, I, I think I reached out to you when I was at McClay up in Tallahassee to see if you were interested in our strength and conditioning uh, position. Uh, and you very, you know, politely turned me down, said that you're uh, very happy at Ransom. But uh, uh, we've known each other in the virtual world for a while, so I'm excited to get to know you a little bit better here um, on the podcast. And to that point, uh, we always like to let our listeners have a chance to get to know our guests. So give us that five minute bio, you know, where you were born, where you grew up, went to school and, and kind of how your path has led you to Ransom Everglades. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not a not a true Floridian like most Floridians. Um, I have migrated from the Northeast. I'm born and raised in Connecticut. Um, you know, 45 minutes outside New York City in a little town called Stanford, Connecticut. I um, was a tennis player growing up. Um, that was really my sport of choice. Uh, played at a pretty competitive level and uh, played a little bit of field hockey and. Uh, like most athletes, I got hurt and, you know, coming back from that injury just really wasn't the same. So uh, I ended up not playing tennis anymore when I went on to college. I went to the University of Connecticut. And uh, when I got there, you know, being coming from being an athlete and your time is so consumed, you know, like every second of your life is, is scheduled and planned. So then going to college and not having sports anymore was really difficult for me. So I actually ended up walking on to the rowing program at the University of Connecticut, which was a division one program there. So um, I got my feet wet there. I was, I was a rower for two years. Um, and that's really where my first exposure was to a weight room. Um, you know, I didn't have strength and conditioning growing up as an athlete. That wasn't really a resource to me. It kind of wasn't um, the norm back then. You know, it wasn't part of your athletic um, experience. So that was really my first exposure um, was through being a, a rowing athlete at UConn. Um, and I fell in love with the weight room. I fell in love with athletics. I kind of knew I was always going to go something into athletics, um, but that really kind of solidified it for me and uh, graduated from UConn, went on to grad school at the University of Miami and kind of continued that path of strength and conditioning. And um, at the University of Miami was really where I, my mind was, um, you know, first really open to the high school athletic experience. I think a lot of people go into strength and conditioning or athletics with really only two options in mind, right? Either you're going to collegiate setting or you're going to the professional setting. And so I think I was on that track until I got to grad school and I realized there's a whole you know, other population of people that I, I think I want to work with. And so that's kind of what led me to um, high school, uh, high school strength and conditioning. And I actually, my first job was at Palmer Trinity. Was that, was that where you were at? <laughs> right. I, I think you came on just as I was leaving. I was the AD there for six years. And then, um, uh, and my wife taught there and coached there and, and we had another opportunity. So I think you might've come on just as I was leaving. Okay. Wow. Small world. Yeah, so yeah. that's how I ended up in Florida and I never left. And uh, I had to take that back. I did leave for a brief moment, but um, that's kind of how I ended up in high school athletics. Yeah. Um, I think for a lot of coaches, uh, I, I know my, my path, you know, uh, you know, 
played small college football and ran track and then was a career football and track coach and kind of, you know, uh, prided myself on uh, my weight room knowledge and training knowledge. And, you know, we did deadlifts and power cleans and, you know, all, all that stuff. Uh, and as the profession of, you know, strength coach and performance coach, you know, begin to grow, I was always, uh, I think, just a little bit leery of, you know, someone that would say, oh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a strength and conditioning coach. And I'm thinking, well, you know, what's your background? You know, what do you know? But uh, uh, in the last, you know, 10 or 15 years, you know, as you were going to school as an athlete and training, the, um, the information and uh, the techniques have, you know, changed and improved so much that uh, I think that trained and certified strength coach, you know, really is um, you know, a valuable addition to um, a training program. We're going to talk a little bit about that in one of our next segments, but um, as you came into uh, Ransom, you've been there for a few years now, you already had a pretty good background of, of schools that you had worked at, including Palmer Trinity. Talk uh, briefly about um, how you come into a, a new environment and you know, kind of let the coaches and the student athletes know that you know what the heck you're talking about. Yeah, there's a fine line um, when when you go to a new job. Well, first you have to get the respect of your colleagues and you have to get, get the respect from the kids. Um, so when you're first starting out and you don't have that you know, direct experience under your belt, it is a little bit challenging. Um, but you know, what I've found is <clears throat> as a young strength and conditioning coach, and even now, uh, as long as you go into it open-minded and willing to you know, learn something new and willing to hear other people out and hear different perspectives, I think that's the unique part about sports and strength and conditioning. There's a million ways to get to the same results. So as long as you are, and I, I feel like I have been pretty good at that. Um, I may have a way that I like to do things, but if that's not how we're going to operate here, if that's not going to work out for us here, that I've, I've always been able to pivot and adapt and be flexible with how I execute programs and write programs. Um, but as long, you know, for me, as long as, you know, as a new a new employee or a new coach, you, you can't come in too hot, but you also can't come in too soft. So mm -hmm. there's, you know, we have a saying here that you don't smile until Christmas, you know, um, you, you kind of have to, to, to show your authority a little bit with the kids right off the bat. And then I like to soften up a little bit, but for me, when we're in the weight room, I don't just tell them to do things. I kind of have to, I take the time to explain why we're doing things. This is going to set us up for this. This is the reason why we're doing this. And I feel like kids, especially at the high school level, I work with a very smart population of kids here and they want to know why. And so I think you get the respect um, from at least explaining to them why we do the things we do and why we're set up the way we're set up. And then they kind of come around like, oh, all right, she, she knows what she's talking about. All right, I trust her, I trust her. Um, and then with my colleagues, you know, I'm willing, I'm, I, I'm willing to help out wherever I can. You know, if, if we need help setting up for a basketball game, I'm there. If, you know, somebody needs support doing this, I'm there. Uh, someone needs coverage, I'm there. So, you know, every time I go somewhere new, as long as, as you know, I'm willing to, to help out and, and, and show that I support the athletic program as a whole, not just strength and conditioning, um, it definitely helps you. It definitely helps you with your success and what you want to do with your program. You know, people then respect respect me and what I'm about. So it's been it's been a fun ride. It's been a fun ride. Uh, and you hit on a couple of key points. You know, uh, building that trust. You know, initially, you know, being flexible and and being part of the whole program. You know, great great stuff. For our listeners, uh, we're visiting with Victoria Drool. She's the head of performance at the Ransom Everglades School in Coral Gables, Florida. We're going to be back with some more, uh, but we're going to take a quick break and hear from one of our sponsors. This is the Educational AD Podcast. We want to thank Huddle for their support of the Educational AD Podcast. Remember, at Huddle, we power sports. Over 180,000 teams, including some of the best in the world, are using Huddle to help their athletes perform better. Huddle's the complete 
performance platform. They have online tools, mobile and desktop apps, smart cameras like the Huddle Focus. Of course, there's analytics and a whole lot more. Huddle is also built for every level of play, starting with club and youth programs all the way through high schools and colleges. And even the pros are using Huddle to help their teams perform better. You're in pretty good company with over 6 million users, including your student athletes, a lot of their parents, and the coaches of the college and university teams that you're trying to get to recruit your kids. If you want to find out more about what Huddle can do for you and your athletic department, or how your school can become a Huddle school, go to Huddle.com and talk to their professionals. Remember, at Huddle, we power sports. Welcome back to our interview with Victoria Drool. She's the head of performance at Ransom Everglades in Coral Gables, Florida. Coach, uh, we always like to have our guests uh, share a little bit about the mentors that they've had in their life. None of us get to where we're at on our own. So uh, who are some of the folks that have helped you along the way? Long list, which I'm very fortunate for. Um, I could probably spend the next 30 minutes just talking about the people that have kind of helped guide me along the way. Um, you know, a coach, even as young as, you know, when I was 13, has still affected me to this day. Um, though we're still not in contact, it's somebody that, you know, I often look back on and um, his coaching style. Um, really he was soft and understanding yeah he was really tough on me and I appreciated all facets of that and I tried to take a little bit of that and, and went up coaching my my students um over at the University of Miami Dr. Brian Biagioli he was my um grad school professor and he ran the grad school program there for us and he has always been brutally honest with me. And I'm someone that gravitates towards that. Uh, I would rather you tell me like it is than sugarcoat anything. And uh, he, he really pushed me um, to be open-minded to high school athletics and high school strength and conditioning. And I'm so thankful that he did. Um, and to this day, we still, you know, shoot the shit. And he still is something that I, I call up and I'm, He's on my, my top of my list to, to email whenever I'm considering something or a change here. Or I want to propose something or, uh, you know, it's not working. He's, he's the first guy that, that um, I, I gravitate towards. Um, I was at IMG Academy for three years. So there's quite a few people there that I would call friends, not necessarily mentors, but people that I, I call to talk shop with all the time. Um, one of the former VPs there, David Hesse, he's no longer there anymore. He's, he's with Kitman, Kitman Labs now, but same with him. You know, he's a straight shooter and has always just, you know, fed me exactly what I needed to hear. And I appreciate the tough love that comes from him and Dr. Biagioli. Um, and I can't say they've steered me wrong. And I feel like they know me pretty well and my personality. So, you know, I got to give a shout out to those two as I, I, I could, I could keep going, but you know, off, off the top of my head there, you know, those two um, are definitely the first two people that uh, I reach out to and whenever I need some, you get shaken. Yeah. No. And, and again, the, it's great that those people are still around in your life. A lot of times, you know, uh, some of the mentors that we've had, you know, they're no longer with us. So uh, it, it's great that you still have them. Uh, we were talking during the break, um, you know, you are a uh, CSCS through the National Strength and Conditioning uh, Association. Um, what I know about the CSCS is how demanding the process is to earn that certification. So can you share a little bit with our listeners, um, you know, maybe what's involved and the degree of knowledge that you need to have both you know, knowledge and practical uh, to achieve that status? You know, what's involved with earning that CSCS? Yeah, CSCS is pretty much the gold standard certification for strength and conditioning coaches today. Um, 
you do need a four year degree in order to qualify to take the exam. So that's kind of what separates it from your uh, personal training exams and certifications and things like that. So you, you need that, that four year degree in order to sit for the exam. Um, it, it's definitely helpful if you have had the exercise science and um, exercise physiology classes in undergrad, it's definitely helpful. Um, a lot of the exam comes from a book called The Essentials Book, which I'm sure listeners have probably heard of. That's a very common textbook that we use as strength coaches. Um, I, I like that this field has, has evolved to the point and now you know it's pretty much a non-negotiable every coach. Um, the collegiate setting, the high school setting, uh, professional setting, most everybody requires it now. So I like that we have gone to that where it's just a base baseline standard. We don't have much of this grandfathering in anymore because you knew somebody who knew somebody and they picked up weights at one point in their life and now they're you know the head strength and conditioning coach. I like that we have this system in place to kind of vet people out and make sure that we're all doing best practices. I can't confidently sit here and say that I think um, that's the only certification we should be doing as strength coaches. You know, I, there is a component missing in the CSCS, which is a practical component. You know, coaches don't have to demonstrate your, there is no coaching practicum that you have to show that you can command a room and, and demonstrate what, what needs to be done. Um, there are a couple other certifications out there that are making their way up and making their, their way, um, noticeable. So, We'll see what happens, but for you know, for now, I'm I'm pretty pleased to say that we we do have this certification, we do have this standard. Um, I encourage anybody out there to to, to definitely get it. Um, it definitely is, is heavily weighted, and you you will need it if you're considering any sort of strength and conditioning in your career. You're definitely going to need it. Um, but I do think that there's there's still going to be room for improvement in the world of strength and conditioning when it comes time to certifications. Yeah, you, you mentioned um, that you'd. Uh, spent some time at IMG, and uh, I started off by saying, you know, we reached out to you uh, when we were looking for a strength and conditioning coach, and that was one of the, you know, the, I mean, that was the top thing. It, it, we had to have a CSCS. Um, how, um, for your jobs at IMG and Ransom, uh, was that a component of the um, qualifications, um, or you know, they just liked your resume and they hired you? Uh, how important is that CSCS, just to reiterate? Uh, it, it definitely was a minimum requirement um, on the application for sure. That along with um, having a master's degree was definitely helpful with both, both of those um, hiring processes. So uh, I, I don't think I would have even sniffed an interview if I didn't have it. So um, I, I can't say that I don't even think they would look at somebody if they didn't have that. I, didn't, I don't even think IMG looked at somebody um, for a summer a summer position, even a part-time position, they still have to have that qualification. So certainly it's played a big role in, in where I've gotten today. And again, for you or for any strength coach, that could be a checkbox as you're considering a position. Okay, well, boy, they don't even ask for a CSCS. I don't know if I want to work here. Um, um, so definitely, it works, definitely. works both ways. Yeah. Yeah. For, for ADs and young coaches, I mean, you have to, you, there's, there's massive risk in the weight room. You have to assess that risk management and that liability component. And you're pretty much covered at this point if you get somebody with a CSCS certification. So I strongly suggest that ADs consider that if they're hiring a strength and conditioning coach. Yeah, great. Very important point. Safety, uh, big component in that weight room. We're going to talk a little bit about that in our next segment. We're going to take a quick break. Uh, for our listeners, again, we're visiting with Victoria Drool, the head of performance at the Ransom Everglades School in Coral Gables, Florida. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. We want to thank Sideline Interactive for their support of the podcast. You know, it's becoming harder and harder to fund an athletic department these days, but Sideline Interactive's indoor scoring tables and video boards can generate $10,000 or more every year, while also creating excitement in the gym and the ultimate game day experience for your athletes. Go to sidelineinteractive.com or call 
786-0302 to schedule a live web demo and see their tables and boards in action. You can also email them at sales at sidelineinteractive.com and see exactly what these fantastic products can do for you and your department. That's sales at sidelineinteractive.com. I promise you, you will come away very impressed. Welcome back to the Educational AD Podcast. We're visiting with Victoria Drool, the head of performance at Ransom Everglades. Coach, uh, one of the things we like to do with the podcast is this idea of sharing best practices. So I'm going to put you on the spot. Um, what are some things that you do in your program? Maybe there are things that you brought to Ransom Everglades that you're particularly proud of. Uh, do you have any best practices you can share with us? Sure. Um, you know, I think we do a lot of things really well here, but not to say we, we always will have room for improvement. Um, I've been here three years now, and prior to my role, there hadn't been a structured strength and conditioning program in athletics. Um, there was a little bit of lapse and there was a gap for several years that they just didn't have a, a full-time program embedded in their athletics. Um, so for me, when I got here, it was really important that we start establishing a culture where strength and conditioning is pretty much a non-negotiable if you want to be an athlete at Ransom Everglades. Um, so we, we operated out of one facility with at eight racks, um, very small square footage, um, but we were only able to, due to our schedule, we had a lot of logistical um, and scheduling constraints, but um, we were only able to host, you know, X amount of kids in the weight room at a time, certain amount of hours after school. We were only working with varsity athletes to start. Um, and we have grown the program so much over the last three years that I can confidently and accurately say we are servicing all 450 athletes here all year round. Um, so we kind of went from this culture of we have a facility, there's nobody really here, to now we're at a point where um, our kids are now demanding that they work out more times in the week, that there's more opportunity for them. Um, so we have grown to two facilities. I do have an assistant uh, strength and conditioning coach that helps me. Um, I'm not a paid uh, person of Team Builder, but I will give them a shout out because Team Builder has, has saved our lives with the volume that we have and just having two people in the department. Uh, we do use Team Builder to help us uh, facilitate our programs and some of our operational stuff. We were pretty much cranking out workouts from 8 a.m. until 6.30 p.m. Um, and uh, it's amazing. It's been so rewarding to watch the transition of kids and the, the, how, how the culture has shifted over the last three years. Um, so, you know, that's, that's one thing I'm really proud of over the last three years, and hopefully we'll continue to grow and, and expand our facilities. You know, that's, that's the next proposal that is coming down the pipeline. <laughs> um, but we have amazing resources at, at Ransom. We're really fortunate here. Um, we have a full-time athletic trainer. We have a part-time athletic trainer. Uh, we really provide some incredible services to our athletes. Uh, strength and conditioning is one of them. Sports medicine is another one. We partner with the University of Miami. We have a, you know, a, part, a really close relationship with the concussion specialist there. Um, we have amazing counselors at the school and medical professionals here. And we have this great little village um, around our kids. And I don't even think they realize how... Um, how, how amazing their support system is. But um, for a small school that we are, and you know, we're not highly, highly competitive, we, we're giving top, top-notch services um, to our athletes. So I'm, I'm really proud, proud to say that we have, we've grown to that point. Oh yeah, absolutely. And again, you know, I've been on your campus many times, um, you know, with teams and, and athletes. For listeners, if you uh, are not familiar with the Ransom Everglades, you know, go ahead and uh, Google it, uh, you know, take a look at their, uh, uh, just the physical campus itself. It's quite um, uh, picturesque, uh, I, I think would be the word. Uh, and again, the facilities are outstanding. Uh, I was blown away as I was 
leaving South Florida to come up into the panhandle, um, you just finished the renovations on the aquatics center. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you guys have hosted the state meet there uh, a number of times. So again, just very, very cool stuff. We'll do this at the end of the interview, but Victoria, if one of the listeners wanted to reach out and pick your brain a little bit on, you know, weight room management or construction or just anything at all. Uh, what's the best way that they can get in touch with you? Uh, I'm, I'm pretty active on LinkedIn. So if you send me a message on LinkedIn, you can, you can certainly get a hold of me there. If you just Google my name and Ransom Everglades, my email will pop up there. So feel free to reach out. Certainly, certainly okay. available. All right. We appreciate it. Again, we're visiting with Victoria Drool, the head of performance, at Ransom Everglades. We're going to take another break, but we'll be back. This is the Educational AD Podcast. We also want to thank Vital Signs Wall of Fame uh, for being a sponsor of the podcast. You know, Vital Signs has a mission to bring your school's legacy to life. They've got a variety of interactive touchscreen video consoles along with an extensive library of templates to make it easier than ever to recognize the athletic achievements of your students, both past and present. For some ideas on how to showcase your school's diverse history, along with your proudest moments, go to vitalsignswalloffame.com or learn more and get started with your digital Wall of Fame tribute. Call them at 614-981-3589 or you can email them at sales at vitalsignswalloffame.com. That's sales at vitalsignswalloffame.com. Welcome back to our interview with Victoria Drool from Ransom Everglades. Coach, one of the questions that we've been asking uh, relates to coaching toughness. You know, toughness is such an important component of sports and of life, but, um, uh, Going back a long, long time when I was in high school, it was very common for my coaches to say, you know, come on, Jake, you got to be tough or come on, Jake, you got to suck it up. And I think over the years, we've maybe found better ways to, you know, try to coach that component. But for you as a strength coach and performance coach, how do we coach kids to be tough while also being sensitive to the social emotional challenges that a, a Generation Z kid of today is experiencing? Uh, do you have any advice for us? I think that's a million dollar question. And if you have the answer, you better write it down and sell a book and, and everything because, you know, I think that's something that every coach and administrator in athletics really struggles with. Um, for starters, I think the word tough or the definition of tough has certainly shifted um, over the last several years, you know. So I think as an athletic department, you need, you need to define kind of what does tough look like or what does tough mean, mean to, you, to your program? You know, is tough the kid that pushes through an injury? Um, and maybe it was at one point the kid that doesn't get water on water breaks and the kid that's hurt and, and plays through the pain. You know, now, now that kid's kind of an idiot because why are you not drinking water and why are you not healing that injury? So I think the whole toughness thing has shifted, you know, is the kid tough who has a lot of issues at home and he shows up every day and puts in a hundred percent, you know, is that kid tougher than the kid that, you know, powers through an injury? Yeah. I don't, I don't know the answer to that. Um, but I think we have to, we have to look at what does tough mean nowadays and, and how does that, and how, how can we apply that? You know, I certainly think, um, you know, toughness to me isn't the kid who nearly kills himself in the weight room every time. Um, and there's, there's certainly a balance. And, you know, once again, explaining that although your idea of toughness may be that you can lift the most weight and you can make the most noise in here, um, Sometimes that toughness, especially in a weight room, is intimidating. And, you know, being in an environment where we have girls and we have boys and we've got a whole spectrum of, of athletic ability, um, I don't want intimidation to be a part of our culture here. Um, 
Uh, so toughness to me can't, can't have that intimidation factor where we're making other people feel uncomfortable. Um, and you've used the word sensitive. Um, and I actually think that, you know, a kid who's tough, in my mind, at least the definition of tough for me, is a kid who is able to display some form of sensitivity or have that emotional capacity to work really hard and be diligent, but also be sensitive to um, maybe just external factors of other teammates on their team or um, things that are going on uh, you know, with a classmate or things that are going on at home. I think as coaches, we need to display, you know, like I said in the beginning, you gotta come in hot, but then you gotta soften up a little bit. Um, we need to be able to display empathy and understanding because they are going through, this is crazy times, man. I mean, COVID, these kids they haven't had a normal school year in a really long time. It's like we as adults are struggling. So imagine the teenager's brain, they're super struggling. Um, so I think we have to have a level of empathy and understanding of what they're going through at this point in their life and making, you know, for me at least, making the weight room, you know, a safe space where kids can be vulnerable and it's not looked at as being soft because the word sensitive has this negative connotation for whatever reason. If you're sensitive, um, not necessarily a positive thing, but I do think it's a positive thing. Um, so we need to embrace that. You know, if a kid comes in crying, you know, we need to embrace that. If a kid comes in um, and they're having a really bad day, I, just being able to work with them and get the team to rally around them, I think allowing allowing our kids the space to to have a moment and to be vulnerable is um, is really really important, especially if they don't have another avenue or an outlet for that, we need to be sure that we, we provide that outlet for them. No, absolutely. And again, you bring up some really great points, uh, defining and explaining to the students, you know, well, this is what we mean to be tough or tough in this situation. And then you brought up the idea of that the tough student, uh, part of that toughness is also being aware of and sensitive to their teammates, um, you know, and being a good teammate too, you know, really, really great stuff. Uh, this has been so much fun. Uh, again, we've been casual connections on LinkedIn, um, but uh, it's been great getting to hear a little bit more about your philosophy and, and your life, you know, very cool stuff. Uh, but we're not done yet. Uh, we always like to wrap up with what we call the athletic director's toolbox. And we're going to take a quick break and hear from Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack, who sponsor the athletic director toolbox segment. And when we come back, I'm going to ask... Uh, Coach Drool, uh, what she would put into an athletic director's toolbox to maybe help that AD uh, understand uh, what a strength and conditioning performance coach needs or you know, how they can help that performance coach do a better job. So it's going to be a special toolbox segment. Uh, stay with us. We'll be right back. Uh, but let's hear from Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack. This is the Educational AD Podcast. Once again, we want to thank Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack for their support of the podcast and sponsoring the Athletic Director Toolbox segment. Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack are a quick, easy, and affordable way for you as an athletic director to collect some comprehensive data that allows you to evaluate and improve your entire athletic program. Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack also connects you with the usually 95% of the parents and the student athletes who really love your program. And it gives them a voice to help demonstrate the importance that a positive athletic experience has for them. Go to Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack and check out their testimonials and then give them a call at 1-800-738-6466 or you can email them at info at athleticsurveys.com to get started. If you've never used a survey to take the pulse of your parents or your student athletes, you're really missing out. Talk to the folks at Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack and let them help you take your athletic department from good to great. 
All right, we're back with Victoria Drool, the head of performance at Ransom Everglades. Coach, it's it's time for you to share uh, your toolbox suggestions. And uh, you know, normally we ask for you know tools um, for an athletic director. We're going to tweak it just a little bit. What are some tools you'd like to put into, uh, let's say, a younger, a new AD's toolbox or an old one uh, that would help them uh, do a better job? as they work in conjunction with the strength and conditioning coach, the performance coach, uh, what tools are going to go in Victoria drools, athletic director toolbox. Hmm. Uh, I think just you know, a general rule of thumb is, you know, always go, go into a situation open-minded. Um, there's no one size fits all approach. You know, what may have worked at a previous institution, may not work at, at the new institution. You know, there's no, no two places that are exactly the same. Um, so I think as long as um, an AD can be open-minded to that, um, you know, that, that'll put, put them and their employees, you know, um, set them up a little bit better for success. And I think that same thing applies with your strength coach at one school is not gonna be the same strength coach at another school. Yes, we're all put into this bubble of, of meatheads, um, egotistical uh, alpha, you know, meatheads, but that's not always the case. Um, so, you know, the way you approach someone, you know, at your, uh, at your old school or wherever you were, um, that same approach may not work with your new employees. So um, for me, at least being open-minded and being able to adjust your approach um, and adjust your, your, communication styles is going to be really important because everybody has a different way of receiving feedback and criticism and instruction and um, it's going to be really imperative for for you to to make sure you're understanding understanding those those things and kind of along those same lines um, get to know get to know your people um, for me that's been so helpful and important to get to know like I know every single coach on this campus and I know more than just, you know, their resume. I know their wives. I know their husbands. I know their kids. I know where they live. I know what they like to do. What they like their hobbies, you know, get to know people outside of their professional realm. And you'll realize that. And as a strength coach, you know, I'm asking these coaches to give up practice time. I'm asking them to, I need 15 minutes here. You'll realize that that'll be a lot easier for them to give up because we have that um, additional relationship outside of work. Um, and they, they'll they bend over backwards for you just as much as you'll bend over backwards for them because you've kind of cultivated this relationship beyond just the professional world. So really just get to know your people on a better, on a deeper level. And I think um, that will go so far um, as long as you are continuing to foster that and be genuine about it and not, um, you know, not an authentic about it. I think as long as you continue to be genuine, uh, that will take you farther than you'll, you'll ever imagine. Um, you know, I think a lot of times, at least the common theme in athletics, you know, we are ego driven a little bit. And I think it's hard, sometimes hard for people to manage their egos. But when it comes time to making hires or you have people in these positions like a strength coach or a trainer, or you have somebody in operations or someone in communications, um, I think, you know, as an AD, being able to let go of a little bit of responsibility. Um, that's hard for some people to do. We like control. We like to make sure things are just the way we want them to be. Um, I think you, you need to put a little trust in, in, in your hires or in your employees. And I get that, you know, like any relationship, you kind of have to earn that trust, but go into it, trusting them, give them the benefit of the doubt. And of course, you know, if they steer you, they steer you wrong or they prove, prove you right, whatever, whatever way you look at it, um, then of course retract. But Go in trusting, um, trust that you've hired the people to do the job that they were intended to do. Trust that your strength coach, if they meet the qualifications that you're looking for and the requirements, trust that they're gonna do um, 
the best that they can and trust that they they are are there for the best interest of the students. And um, I think you'll realize that uh, as long as you trust them and let them, just like we do with the kids, give them a little bit of autonomy. You know, they they're gonna feel like they 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 are part of something. So trust trust your employees, trust your hires that um, they're there to do do what they were hired to do. Boy, um, very wise words. Uh, I love that idea of, of you know the whole flexibility thing and uh, and trusting your people. Great, great stuff. Coach, once again, if one of our listeners wants to reach out and pick your brain a little bit, and I certainly encourage you to do so, what's the best way that they can get in touch with you? Yeah, you can definitely find me on LinkedIn. Victoria Drool well, should pop right up. Um, not many, not many Victoria Drools, I don't think, on LinkedIn. Uh, but you can certainly just search my name and Ransom Everglade School and my, my email and contact information will come up. Please don't hesitate to message me or email me. I'm, I'm pretty accessible. Okay. Victoria Drool, Head of Performance at Ransom Everglades School in Coral Gables, Florida. Thanks so much for being on the podcast today and all the best moving forward. Thanks so much for having me. Oh, you were great. For our listeners, remember the Zoom recordings of our interviews are uploaded to the Educational AD Podcast YouTube channel. We appreciate you listening today. Come back again next time for another episode of the Educational AD Podcast. We also want to thank Hometown Ticketing for their support. Hometown Ticketing is the leading digital ticketing provider to schools and colleges. You can learn more about what Hometown Ticketing can do for you and your program by going to hometownticketing.com. Hometown Ticketing, simple and easy online ticketing.